How to Adjust Immigration Status Through Marriage If you are an immigrant who has married a U.S. citizen, you become classified as an immediate relative by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, USCIS. Based on this classification, you can immediately apply to adjust your immigration status through marriage and become a lawful permanent resident of the U.S. The adjustment of status process is only available to immigrants who originally entered the U.S. legally. Part 1 Submitting Form I-130 1. Speak with your spouse To adjust your immigration status through marriage, your spouse must file Form I-130, Petition for Alien Relative, with USCIS on your behalf. Make sure your spouse understands this requirement, because you can't proceed until a petition has been submitted. This petition begins your adjustment of status process. If you are currently in the U.S. and entered legally, you typically are eligible for this process. Applying for an adjustment of status from within the U.S. means you don't have to leave the country and can remain with your spouse while your application is being processed. You also will be eligible for work permits during the processing time. To serve as your sponsor, your spouse must be a citizen, U.S. national, or lawful permanent resident of the U.S. who is over the age of 18. 2. Download the petition form and instructions. You can download Form I-130 from the USCIS website, or you can get a paper form from the nearest field office. The form includes instructions for completing and submitting it. Make sure your spouse reads the instructions carefully. The two of you may want to consult an immigration attorney if you have any questions. Keep in mind that incomplete or inaccurate information on the petition can result in delays or even denial of your application. 3. Have your spouse complete the form. To begin the process of adjusting your immigration status, your spouse must complete a petition for you. The form requires information about you, your spouse, and your marriage. This form must be completed and signed under penalties of perjury. If your spouse doesn't know some information about you, he or she may ask you. After your spouse has completed the petition, it's a good idea to look over it yourself and make sure all the information is complete and correct. 4. Have your spouse file the petition. Once your spouse has completed and signed the petition, he or she must submit it to the USCIS along with a copy of your marriage certificate and any other required documents. Only after the petition has been approved by USCIS will you be eligible to adjust your immigration status. The USCIS has two lockboxes to which your spouse must mail the complete petition packet, one in Phoenix and one in Chicago. Which one your spouse will use depends on where you and your spouse live. Send copies of any documents, such as your marriage certificate, do not mail the originals. Keep in mind, however, that you will need to present the originals at your interview. The petition must be accompanied by a $420 filing fee. The easiest way to pay this fee is with a certified or cashier's check drawn from a U.S. bank. Make copies of everything being sent to the USCIS before you mail it, and keep these copies in a safe place. 5. Receive an approval notice. The USCIS will send an approval notice when your spouse's petition has been reviewed. This notice indicates that everything in the petition is complete and you are eligible to apply for an adjustment of immigration status. It can take up to 30 days to receive this notice. Since U.S. immigration law does not limit the number of immigrant visas available for family members, you typically can automatically proceed to the next step. This means as soon as your petition is approved, you can complete your application to adjust your immigrant status. This is true even if you've overstayed your visa. Keep in mind that approval of your petition does not mean that you are guaranteed to get your green card. USCIS still will investigate your relationship. Part 2 Completing Your Application 1. Download Form I-485 and Instructions You can get a copy of the necessary forms to apply for an adjustment of immigration status by visiting the USCIS website. You also may be able to get paper copies of the forms by going to the nearest USCIS field office in person. Form I-485 can only be used if both you and your spouse currently live in the U.S., your spouse is a citizen, U.S. national, or lawful permanent resident, and you entered the U.S. legally. If any of these criteria don't match your situation, you'll have to use different forms and a different process to get your green card through marriage. You may want to consult an attorney. 
You also can contact the USCIS National Customer Service Center at 1-800-375-5283 if you are unsure about the forms. It's a toll-free call, but you should only use this number if you are in the U.S. 2. Fill out your form. Be sure you've read the instructions carefully before you start entering information and that you understand everything on the form. You must answer every question completely and accurately. To enter information on the form, type or print legibly using black ink. If you need more space to answer than that provided on the form, use a continuation sheet. At the top of each continuation sheet, type or print your name and registration number, A, number, along with the applicable part or item number that corresponds to the answer. Finish your answers, then sign and date your form. You also must sign and date each continuation sheet you use. 3. Gather supporting documents. There are a number of documents that must be submitted as initial evidence along with your application form. Make copies of these documents rather than sending originals, and provide complete translations of documents written in any language other than English. These documents include a copy of your birth certificate or other official birth record, official statements of any criminal record you have, including any incidents of arrest or conviction of a crime. Two identical color photos of yourself that were taken within the last 30 days. A copy of your passport page that shows your non-immigrant visa stamp. Any required police clearances. And a report from your medical exam. Your medical exam can be completed after you've filed your application and the report submitted separately. You also have the option of bringing the report with you to your interview. 4. Submit your paperwork. You must send USCIS your original signed application, not a photocopy, along with copies of any supporting documents and the required filing fee. You may be able to find information about where to send your application packet on the USCIS website. You also can call the USCIS National Customer Service Center at 1-800-375-5283. The filing fee for Form I-485 is $985. You must pay using a check or money order drawn on a U.S. bank. If you pay by check, USCIS will process it electronically. 5. Get a medical exam. USCIS requires you to complete a medical exam and have the doctor fill out a report. The purpose of this exam is to make sure you don't have any serious diseases or diseases you could spread to others in the United States. The exam must be conducted by a doctor approved by the USCIS. Visit the USCIS website or call the National Customer Service Center for help locating an approved doctor near you. Before you attend your appointment, you'll need to print out Form I-693, Report of Medical Examination and Vaccination Record, and take it with you to your exam. You can download the form from the USCIS website. After your exam, the doctor will complete and sign the form, then seal it in an envelope. Do not open this envelope. You must submit it, sealed, to USCIS. Keep in mind that the USCIS does not regulate the fees for this exam, so they may vary widely among doctors. 6. Attend your fingerprinting appointment. Within one to three months of receipt of your application and petition, the USCIS will send you notice of a biometrics appointment. At this appointment, an immigration officer will take your fingerprints and photo. Biometrics are required for all green card applicants between the ages of 14 and 79. When you arrive at your biometrics appointment, you must pay a fee of $85. Part 3 Attending Your Interview 1. Receive Your Notice Within a few months after USCIS receives your application for adjustment of immigration status, you'll receive a notice in the mail with the date, time, and location of your interview. Both you and your spouse are expected to attend. Your notice also should include a list of documents you're required to bring with you. Expect to bring a copy of all other notices you've received from USCIS, along with a copy of your application and the petition filed on your behalf. At the interview, an immigration officer will ask you questions about the information you provided on your application. Take some time to go over all of that information and make sure it's still correct. If anything has changed, make a note of the changes and gather any documents you need to prove the change has taken place. For example, if you or your spouse are working for a different employer than you were when you filed your application, you'll need to bring new employment certification and recent pay stubs so the officer can verify your income. 2. Gather original documents. 
When you submitted your application, you included copies of various documents. At your interview, you will need to bring the originals so the immigration officer can verify them. At a minimum, you'll need your marriage certificate and your passport. Both you and your spouse will have to present a government-issued photo identification at the interview. Organize your documents according to type to make them easy for you to find and for the immigration officer to verify. Remember that you must have complete translations of any documents that aren't in English. You also must have a statement from the interpreter certifying that the translation is complete and accurate. Since you're applying for an adjustment of your immigration status because of marriage, you'll need to bring documents to your interview that provide evidence of the life you and your spouse share together. This could include a joint mortgage or lease, joint bank account statements, or the like. 3. Decide if you need an interpreter. You don't have to speak English to get a green card. If you're not fluent in English, you may want to bring an interpreter along with you to the interview. This way you can avoid answering questions incorrectly because you weren't clear about what the immigration officer said. Don't let pride get in your way. Even if you've been studying English, the interview is important and you want to make sure you get everything right. Your spouse cannot serve as your interpreter. Part of the purpose of the interview is to screen for possible marriage fraud. However, you don't have to hire a professional interpreter. The person can be a friend or family member, they just have to be fluent both in English and in your native language. 4. Consult an attorney. You are allowed to bring an attorney with you to your interview. Even if you believe your case is relatively simple and straightforward, you may want to hire an attorney to accompany you, especially if you feel at all nervous or uneasy. Most immigration attorneys give free initial consultations, so it won't hurt to talk to someone even if you don't think you need an attorney. If you know of any nonprofit organizations in your area that assist immigrants, they can be a good place to go for legal assistance or general advice on how to prepare for your interview. Keep in mind that you can hire an attorney just for the interview, they don't have to represent you in your immigration case as a whole. 5. Go to the USCIS field office. Try to arrive at the field office at least 15 to 20 minutes before the time listed on your notice. When you get there, you will have to pass through security at the entrance, then find the correct office. Both you and your spouse should wear clean, conservative clothing to the interview. Think of wearing the type of clothes you would wear to a church service or a job interview. You'll typically have to wait a while after you get to the office, so you might want to bring a book or magazine to read to pass the time. 6. Answer the immigration officer's questions. The immigration officer will take you to a private office and swear you in, and then ask you questions about the information you provided on your application. They also will ask you and your spouse questions about your marriage. Keep in mind as you answer the questions that you are under oath. If the answer to a question has changed since you completed your application, let the immigration officer know that. If you don't know the answer to a question, simply say I don't know. Don't try to make up something or guess what answer the immigration officer wants to hear. Ask for clarification if you don't understand a question. The officer will rephrase the question or break it down into smaller pieces so you can understand it. 7. Receive your green card. The immigration officer will add a temporary stamp to your passport at the conclusion of your interview. Assuming all goes well, you should expect to receive your green card in the mail within a few weeks. Sometimes the officer will need additional documents from you. This normally occurs if something has changed since you filed your application, but you didn't bring documents with you as evidence to back up the change. If that happens, the officer will list the documents they need and give you a deadline by which you should mail them to the officer. Once everything is complete, you should get your green card in the mail within 90 days. After that time, if you still haven't gotten your green card, go to the USCIS website and make an InfoPass appointment so you can discuss your case status with an immigration officer.